Madam Chair, the, nuclear, the question of this debate states that does South Korea need nuclear weaponry or does it not? We believe that is, it does not need a nuclear weapon and we're going to prove to you in two and three systematic reasons uh, before which I would like to go for uh, to a rebuttal and uh, uh, provide you with a certain framing, right? First of all, we believe that a nuclear weapon is a dangerous weapon which actually uh, needs, to needs to be pertained if, uh, if it, it exists in democratic states where there is a check and balance, check and balance system of legitimacy of government when whenever uh, whenever the government has the uh, has the capacity to uh, has the capacity to, to go go about uh, go about and um, look for the um, necessity of um, the nuclear power right uh, so in this case uh, uh, we I mean if we're gonna follow along by the threat of uh, the Prime Minister, in their whole case, it's going to be harm. It's going to be harmful in in two ways. First of all, they claim that um, they say that uh, the, their line of argumentation is specifically based on this. Uh, South Korea is supported by U.S. and North Korea is supported by China. We believe that this compar that this uh, illogical matter, morally, I mean, it's abhorrent because uh, if we're going to follow along for the for the principle of self-defense and support uh, get the support of U USA uh, to have this um, nuclear weapon. I mean, North Korea is more likely to be in, in, more likely to be uh, raged by the fact that U.S. has once again supported us, once again supported in uh, deals. I mean, by the very claim, by the very by the very their own reasoning, they uh, fall into that trap of uh, illogical. Um, I'll just see because it is comparatively wrong, comparatively wrong. I mean, when we consider the status quo, where there is already nuclear disarmament deals, there is already the peace talks that is already happening. I mean, meeting of the Kim Jong Un and um, and the the president of uh, South Korea, right? So we believe that this is more, this is more likely to, to harm uh, both uh, both um, states in this uh, in this case because uh, once we consider that. Uh, once we can, I mean, and another line of argument, another line of response for for the prime minister on the fact that um, there is no um, such a thing as like China uh, being a supportive of North Korea and trying to spread its communistic uh, ideology, right? I mean, China itself is with a capitalistic economy is more likely to mean any I and mean, has has for the last 35 years have been supportive of capitalistic states that are trying to be a partnership with. So in this case, we believe it's more likely to to uh, I mean, it's not in the interests of China itself to pursue that such images and means. So, uh, go, coming on into our three lines of argumentations. First, first of all, we believe. I mean, we believe it is. I mean, the very existence, the very produce. I mean, uh, the very understand the very uh, fact that uh, North Korea is going to be producing or um, manufacturing any nuclear weapons is going to harm uh, North Korea in three ways. First of all, I mean, uh, it's more likely to de-escalate, the uh, escalate the escalate the uh, the the existing um, existing nuclear threat in North Korea, in Korean Peninsula. Uh, first of all, it's going to um, it's going to bring in two uh, um, harms in two ways. First of all, it's ecologically. Secondly, in societal level. First of all, I mean it's more likely to uh, happen that once uh, uh, once the uh, North Korea is is going to acquire the knowledge that uh, South South Korea is developing this um, North Korea and North Korea and is going to uh, uh, is uh, whenever the country is developing some sort of uh, weaponry for, for self-defense, and it is uh, it is uh, gone through uh, in within democratic state of, of South Korea, it's going to be uh, portrayed in media coverages how, um, and and a psychologically harm people in in several ways. First of all, whenever you're living in your own society, you're not actually uh, you are all, always going to be here that uh, in through media through books through. Uh, TV um, and media outlets. You are, I mean, whenever you go to school, you are more likely to feel yourself unsafe because of the fact that uh, North Korea, South Korea has a nuclear weapon. Within, when you're living and citizen in South Korea, because I mean, because of the fact that North Korea doesn't have check balances as South Korea, and it may affect any, at any moment. I mean, uh, whenever you're going for, to school, to uh, to your work, you're unsecure of your own uh, sustenance, and you are more likely to be. Uh, 
feel unsafe, it is going to harm people in a way that uh, people will be less likely to, uh, will be less willing to live in unstable societies. And it's uh, harmful for the society itself because in some, in some, some certain cases previously in Cuban wars where they, similar to, uh, certain things happened, um, there were no issue. Uh, uh, yeah, POI, if you have a POI, please, for continue. Uh, yes, uh, CG. So why do you think that it will lead to escalation rather than de-escalation? If you have deterrence power from your uh, home south, you can deter North Korea from attack. Yeah. Thank you. The problem is that it's already happening that um, there has already been a competitive nuclear uh, weaponry among uh, among these two two states, right? We believe that it's, uh, it's going to de-escalate the conflict in a, in a way that um, once the North Korea is going to acquire the knowledge that the North Korea, South Korea is developing and producing it, I mean, they're more likely to compete, they're more likely to uh, go about uh, because uh, uh, it's more likely to harm, it's more likely, it increases the likelihood that these, com these two countries are going to be a competitive in terms of uh, weaponry, right? I mean, um, in terms of psychological levels, right? It's going to harm people in a way that uh, people will secure, I mean, feel themselves unsecure. And, and secondly, um, society level that the businesses which are running at the current in the status quo is likely to be harmed because whenever you see that, whenever you're a business person from international uh, in international market, you're less likely to invest in the community which feels the, which feels itself unsafe, which is uncertain, and which is unstable in terms of its uh, future, right? Because um, it, in, it, uh, it increases the likes, uh, likelihood, it, uh, less li it makes the less likelihood that the businesses are not going to run in a proper way. Secondly, um, why we believe that it's going to harm people in a way that uh, people uh, in specific use are going to be harmed in a way that they are less likely to uh, believe and they're, they're less likely to uh, um, uh, to engage in um, public uh, discourses. Uh, and two other points that my, me and my teammate is going to improve is that uh, uh, North, when North Korea is, is more likely to, uh, whenever North Korea is going to acquire the knowledge, they're more likely to attack this by preemptive argumentation, right? We believe this is compared to what, what the uh, government side needs to prove. And also, whenever this, as it is in the status quo, Kim, Kim Jong-un in, in his deathbed is, um, uh, may actually press press the button uh, just to uh, just before he dies because the uh, when there when there whenever there is a new checks and balance system he's more likely to harm those uh, societies because he's not actually bound by the uh, by uh, by any law and legitimacy right yeah. we believe it's more likely to harm yes uh, we are proud to oppose thank you madam chair um, the whole debate has rightly focused upon the relationship between North and South Korea. And I think we really should focus on that. And why is that? So what, what should we hope, be hoping to gain from the relationship between North and South Korea? Well, because of the geographical proximity between North and South Korea, as the government rightly pointed out, North Korea poses a huge threat to South Korea. And as as they pointed out as well, that is due to the fact that North Korea has a completely different ideological system to South Korea. As um, the member of a government pointed out, the fact that North Korea's leadership is so unpredictable, that means South Korea is constantly in a state of um, fear and confusion as to what the North Korean leader may do. Now, we believe that the way to um, solve this situation is through peaceful communications. Um, De-escalation at the moment is happening, and we believe that sanctions, are, rather than nuclear weapons, are the only effective um, tool to use um, to bring peace between the two nations. Um, so, first of all, why the main argument from government was that South Korea deserves to defend itself. And um, we believe that this argument of self-defense is not applicable to this situation. Why? So basically, a nu nuclear weapon is different from any other type of weapon. First, we need to understand why people use nuclear weapons or governments. It's a form of deterrence, okay? So generally, nuclear weapons aren't created to be used so if you see with like the cold war for example and there was a buildup of nuclear weapons but both sides were simply building more and more as the other side built uh, more and it's basically um, it works for nations who care about their citizens it, they um, nuclear weapons pose a risk to um, the, ma the majority of the populations and therefore if a nuclear war breaks out then all those people are going to die but in North Korea, that isn't necessarily an issue for them. Now, why is that? Well, first of all, the North Korean leader has these sort of nuclear bunkers where he can go hide. And second of all, 
people, um, despite the fact that there are no nuclear bunkers for the rest of his citizens, due to the fact that there's no democracy and he's um, frequently shown through violations of human rights that he does not care about his citizens, um, the, 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 the threat of nuclear war uh, um, will not have any effect whatsoever upon the North Korean leadership due to the fact that they do not care about their citizens. There is also the other fact that due to the fact that there is no democracy and no freedom of speech and no freedom of information either, the fact that the citizens don't will not be exposed to the fact that South Korea is developing nuclear weapons, that's most likely, and that there is a big threat from South Korea, and therefore there'll be no backlash from the citizens demanding that the rulers um, don't engage in nuclear war because they simply won't know about it and they simply won't be able to speak about it. So in effect, all the arguments about self-defense are not applicable because a South Korea developing nuclear weapons will not prevent North Korea from using them, okay? And that means that South Koreans are very likely to die. North Koreans may also die, but the leader who's um, controlling all of this, who has the power perhaps to not use no, um, nuclear weapons, um, will not be affected and will, um, he has... Um, He's basically got no morals, and the South Korean government does. They have to be. They have to abide by morals, and uh, we believe that because the South, South South Korea is a democracy, um, it has to do the best for its people, and therefore it wants the um, greatest amount of people to live, live, and the least amount of people to die. But by developing nuclear weapons, it puts their citizens at risk. Now, why? So with North Korea, I think we really need to focus on the fact that for North Korea, it's a status symbol. Nuclear weapons. It's the only thing that they're well known for and due to the fact that there's this autocratic regime with this one despotic head um, it's his sort of star on his shoulder it's something that he can feel proud and the fact that South Korea um, would start developing nuclear weapons would threaten his um, stance in the world his global stance and he would feel he's competitive about his position that's been shown due to the fact that he um, proudly goes to the openings of nuclear weapons so he would feel competitive and he would develop more nuclear weapons. Um, another reason why he developed more nuclear weapons is because he just feels threatened that they may attack North Korea. So um, there's two reasons why more weapons would be developed. Now why is that bad? Well the more weapons you have the more powerful uh, the more like gigatons or I don't know what to say the more power the more nuclear power you have and the more nu nuclear power you have more people are likely to die and as we said the South Korean government what the least amount of people to die. Uh, and there's also the fact that, as um, a government mentioned, the fact that the, there's no checks and balances in North Korea, which means that a nuclear war is much more likely to take place. So in a democratic country, for a nuclear weapon to be released, it would have to go through all these different organizations and all these different structures. But due to the fact that uh, North Korea is ruled by one ruling man, um, who's um, it's down to his um, whim of the day, how he's feeling. So that means that he's much more likely to release a nuclear weapon. And if he has more nuclear weapons due to the fact that South Korea has created more, that means that the outcome of him releasing weapons is going to be much more um, deleterious to South Korea. Then finally, due to the fact that South Korea and North Korea are culturally and geographically very close, that means that there's a huge risk of information leakage. So we saw in the Cold War that as soon as the USA started developing nuclear weapons, that information magically leaked to um, the USSR as well. So South Korea, the fact that South Korea has connections with the USA and it's got a stellar educational system means that it's much more likely to produce a lot more effective nuclear weapons than North Korea is currently doing. And that information, that new information from South Korea's research, which would cost an awful lot of taxpayers money, by the way, which wouldn't be good for North South Korea's economy, um, would mean that, um, um, that um, th this information could be leaked to North Korea. How? Via espionage, kidnapping, and simply by researchers being offered uh, uh, lots of money by North Korea. And therefore, North Korea could have more powerful nuclear weapons, which means that the effect of a nuclear war would be even worse. So just wrapping up, the fact that the, uh, nuclear weapons um, will not deter South, uh, North Korea from using weapons against South Korea, which is the whole premise of government's argument, due to the fact that the North Korean government does not care about the lives of its citizens, as has been shown by the fact that it's not a democracy and it, has, um, it violates human rights. And then second of all, we believe that the best system is de-escalation and the fact that um, the ideological, the reason why North Korea is so dangerous is because its ideological system 
system is just so at odds. And therefore, by communicating with it peacefully, its ideological system could be brought back to something similar to a more liberal and democratic system. And therefore, South Korea would have less risk. That's why I'm very proud to oppose. Thank you. Thank you. So first of all, I would like to uh, oppose the, what just uh, what the just opposition said right now regarding uh, that uh, the solution which they provided regarding what happens if the North if the South Korea doesn't pro doesn't produce nuclear weapon and given here that they have the capacity to produce it as well and they have got the resources so they are a very well functioning country which and they are very well capable to produce them stuff the new nukes so first of all if they don't produce it the, the, the opposition t tells us that they should de-escalate through talking or through peaceful procedures and something like that, but they don't exactly show us how that mechanism will take place. But right, so they, 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 they tell us that North Korea won't, uh, don't care about the life of the people and they, they are basically ruled by a whim of a single person. So that, that whim of a single person also dictates that person can also, also change his uh, decision. So you can't basically negotiate them. And you have to like, so if you can't force him, uh, so if you are if you are threatening him, if you suppose if you are threatening him, similarly that same argument dictates that you can't negotiate with them as well. So because he can change his mind as well, because he is not clearing for his people. Now, secondly, uh, we have already talked about that new how nuclear arsenal is built to uh, to, uh, to give us some of deterrence for the countries which are like possessing these new nuclear arsenals. So we have got two examples, one from Cold War, as the opposition mentioned, but. Here, what opposition lacks is like a historical insight in terms of like when Russia and America both were building up their nuclear arsenals, the MAD doctrine and the mutual assured, assured destruction doctrine actually dictates that because of that arsenal, both countries are sure that they are not going to use it and they are going to refrain from using it because they are they, they don't want their countries to be destroyed. Now, if the, if the opposition is telling us that uh, the, the ruler doesn't care for his country or for his people, but he still, he still cares for a nation, he is, he is basically a ruler, right? So if you, if you create those kind of, uh, if, you, if you don't have those kind of nuclear deterrences, and if, if let's say if a nuclear war happens, and if, if, if the person is not even caring for these people, he is still caring for his country, and then eventually he will lose his country because the country will ultimately get destroyed by the nukes. So basically, the MAD doctrine also MAD doctrine dictates that it is a sort of a like deterrence uh, from possessing nuclear weapons. And uh, furthermore, there there are two there are, uh, there is another example. So like when Russia was building up their nuclear arsenal, Russia was equally ruthless as ruthless as North Korea is right now. So basically, building up nuclear arsenal actually deterred the whole thing. Similarly, an example is from uh, recent history from uh, Pakistan and India, but both are nuclear countries and both actually deterred because they had these nuclear uh, uh, arsenals and international pressure actually forced them to succumb to the negotiations. So having nuclear weapons is actually sort of beneficial for the country as well. Now, opposition also tells us that a democratic country, a democratic country is they should refrain from using these weapons of destruction. So if a dictatorship can have them, so can a democratic country. And it's, it's more urgent for a democratic country to, uh, to, to protect its sovereignty and to protect its security to have these kind of uh, nuclear weapons. And now uh, also opposition points out that there are mechanisms. So there, if a if dictatorship doesn't have so those kind of mechanisms, uh, so the, but the leader can just pull the button and it will like fire, he will fire up the nukes. But same, same cases apply for the democracy. But if, if there is a condition of war, if there are like violent conditions, all of those mechanisms are sort of flexible and the power rests with the president or the head of the states and he has the actually new launch codes or something like that. So these kind of mechanisms actually, actually turn very flexible in terms of war. So that is not an issue. The system, the balance and checks are not an issue. And it's more important to save a democratic institution because the idea of democracy or the institution itself is more valuable than, because, than rather than to be threatened by a dictatorship or by another, another ideological regime. Furthermore, now what happens? Now I'm going to provide you uh, the, the, now, right, until now, we have talked about how the relationship between South Korea and North Korea affects whether should uh, South Korea have weapons or not. But I'm going to give you a different perspective here now. So first of all, I'm going to give you a global perspective. For now, a country and right now, a, a realistic international relation, uh, re, uh, an international relations which are ruled by realis, realistic ideology, 
a country, it, it has either to be an economical superpower, it has, or it has either, it, it has to be a defensive superpower. There's only two ways when you can assert your dominance in a real world or make an alliance or like generally do anything in an international, on an international forum. So now America or like all the Western ideas, which Western nations, which are ruled by capitalist ideology, they are economically dominant than the countries which are not economically dominant now. So basically we are not, we are not I'm not talking about China, but I'm just talking about how the China is creating its lobbies, how, how, how it's basically creating those kind of small countries. So we are basically heading towards a second cold war, which is in, eventually, uh, eventually happened between probably between China and so, no, uh, USA. If, if South Korea right now doesn't create its or produces its own nuclear weapons and given they have, they, they have the capacity to produce it. So it's basically an urgency and what it will do is that it is going to reduce the dependence of South Korea on other Western powers. It's going to uh, reduce the Western uh, influence in the region as well. So basically now, right now, North Korea antagonizes the West as its uh, oppressor or as, 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 as an opponent. But when South Korea will have these nuclear weapons, it will actually provide, it, it will actually stop antagonizing the West because it will eventually reduce the South Korea's dependence on the West itself. And furthermore, it will provide South Korea with security. It, uh, South Korea is an eco economically grow, grow, growing market. So it's very important to, for the South Korean people or for the South Korean country. It's a, it's a democratic nation. So it's very important to save its global market as well. Because there's a looming threat and people are going to be less sure about investing in that country if they have, if they are uncertain about what North Korea is going to do. So there are people, there's going to be less investment, there's going to be less income. And because it's a growing market, it's going to be detrimental to the South Korean economy as well. So it's very important from those terms as well to be a pro uh, to be a nuclear armed a nuclear armed nation. Uh, do I have time? Um, it's six fifteen right now. Uh, so uh, and furthermore, just from the, I'm going to give you three perspectives. So it's going to, from the perspective of North Korea, it is going to occur. Uh, it is going to function as a deterrent. From the perspective of South Korea, it is going to increase its security. It's, it's going to increase its sovereignty. It's going to lessen its dependence. From the perspective of the world, it's going to make a world a safer place from from terms that it is going to in, uh, reduce the invest, alien influence from the uh, region. It is going to also help U.S. to reduce its the amount of its uh, the amount it spends on the surveillance of North Korea and something like that. And also the uh, opposition talked about leaked information. So it's uh, for the, the, the means which they are talking about leaking the information, they are hypothetical or they are derivative. The similar, their same means are the in advancement of technological and inspired where it's so advanced that you can also preserve or save the information from the same means through which it's getting leaked. So uh, the proximity doesn't matter because if, if, you, if you want to spy, you have the global satellites as well. So that's a derivative point and I'm going to engage with that one as well. Thank you. Yeah, that's why we would like to propose this uh, motion. Yeah. Okay, I'd like to thank the member of government for us. You can call upon the member of opposition. Another reason that the most important actor in this debate is not really like, the most important enemy of South Korea in this debate is not really North Korea as contrary to it as it's been made. Because understand that North Korea has a great incentive in preserving status quo, it has a great incentive in ensuring that things continue to go on the way they are going on, which means at best it wants to create deterrence against like say South Korea attacking it or US attacking it, it, it doesn't really have an incentive to um, become an expansionist power that wants to like invade South Korea or that wants to infringe upon it because that threatens its regime collapsing. And therefore like North Korea really isn't the most threatening actor in this debate, right? Because as much as they try to threaten us, they don't, they're not really a sort of actor that really wants like any more instability in this area than already exists because that is more likely than not to be a disadvantage. We don't think that China is an, a, a sort of actor that stands behind North Korea's act. We think that analysis, analysis is 50 years too late because understand that China isn't that committed to like communism beyond the name of the party itself because like China itself is also transitioning towards a sort of market system that is like a government oligarchy and, and it's not interested in like preserving communism or like spreading communism across the world, right? So we don't think that it has much interest to protect North Korea. In fact, we think that the, the leaders of the two countries haven't met in like several decades. So we don't think that North Korea is the most important actor in this debate. So we don't think that like that is the one we should be focusing on. What we should be focusing on is, is like the pernicious influence of China in this particular region. Because we think that is something that is far more likely to, uh, to like um, bite South Korea in the wrong way. We think that like 
the moment you arm yourself with me the moment you like try to posture yourself as an independent actor and we totally agree with cg's analysis that this will make us look independent this will disconnect us from the best the moment china feels that this is an actor that is independent and that is like threatening that has its own nukes and that can attack us on its own accord we think china is far more likely to attack uh, to like uh, to react with fear right they're far more likely to feel that this is a threat to our influence in this area this is an an an, own, an independent actor that can attack us in different ways that has its own strategy and therefore china is far more likely to like react by trying to surround us right and it does have like even though it's not an ideological ally with north north korea it can use north korea in certain ways by pulling certain strings and therefore and it does have like uh, it does have far more naval cap- capability than like say south korea does on its own like independent of its uh, support from the us and therefore we don't think that south korea will be able to defend itself from any kind of incursions that china tries to create by like um, by, by trying to surround it from the bottom and top right and therefore we think that china is 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 far more likely to win out in this conflict because we don't think that south korea has that kind of conventional warfare capability which means that even though by building these nukes you might be able to like create some sort of deterrent uh, against like nuclear warfare we don't think that south korea ha- has the capability to have that kind of convention uh, to like uh, defend its turf in the in the sea and we think that the moment china comes for you south korea is not likely to be capable of like do, doing so right because we don't think that small skirmishes are something that you can like react by threatening nuclear actions to because that simply costs you too much legitimacy and therefore we think that china is continue is going to continue to do things that it it is already to some extent doing but at a slower pace because like it has the threat of us involvement there to stop it right we think that china is far more likely to therefore like um, try to say build more artificial islands try to create a naval presence in around in and around south korea and what are the so, sort of impacts that are likely to result from this we think that it's going to try to push say bad trade deals on us it's going to push unfair conditions on us and we think that we will have to accept those that south korea will have to accept those conditions because like it's simply too threatening otherwise to like try to defy china
the, the South Korean nuclearization, and that is something that is far more likely to then, then result in increasing expenses of, on warfare, like a, a, a much larger decrease in uh, in spending on development and 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 uh, investment on those things, and 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 overall, it's going to increase tensions in the area, and therefore, like attacks. Uh, th therefore, uh, Russell, the mo more problematic actor in the area, the, the one that is likely to hurt us more, as compared to say like. North Korea, which is comparatively benign to deal with, and therefore isn't the biggest focus in this. Very, very, but even if we want to use these nukes in some way, we think that we already have like U.S. nukes present in the area that the U.S. can control. So we don't think that nukes are the most necessary option. Very, very proud to um, oppose. Madam, there's three questions that we need to answer in this debate to take this debate over all the sides. Firstly, where are the relations between North Korea and South Korea in bro? Secondly, where do we have better support for to counter influence from North Korea and China in specific? And lastly, where does it lead to long-term stability on the region? Firstly, on the clash as to where the relations between North Korea and South Korea improve. Site closing government says that now that you are an independent actor and you don't need any support from say US altogether or any Western influence, firstly it will deter the uh, uh, firstly it will deter North Korea from attacking, but secondly it will reduce the ten, uh, like uh, influence of North Korea from attacking you just because you dissociate yourself completely from the US. Firstly, we think that it is an extremely unstrategic decision to dissociate yourself from US completely because understand that US doesn't just hold deterrence towards North Korea in the form of uh, uh, in the form of nukes that they hold because we think that all the sides have conceded to the fact that nukes are just there for deterrence. We think that what you, uh, what North Korea also does is things like border like uh, bo border wars and uh, military uh, border wars and military threats where they go on to attack the people or South Korea at the ground level. We think that US provides the military support to attack and put counter influence in this type of regions as well. Therefore, we think that it is important to have the support of US to have these small term like to ensure that these small term uh, attacks are also like um, uh, 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 handled in the best case possible. But secondly, what happens now is that when you ensure that you, uh, US shows uh, when you don't need US and you start developing your own nukes and see that site closing government has considered the fact that this happens in the status quo. We feel that what happens now is that you show actively that you don't need the support of US, which means that now Trump has still has an incentive to stay in this particular region because he has a strategic incentive to stay in this region to support like half counter influence to North Korea in specific. And we have shown that uh, we have seen that Trump has shown uh, like uh, has vocally shown many times that he's against North Korea and that is one of the areas where he's getting votes and he is winning which means that when he opts out of this region it is very difficult for like him to win the election because it is seen that he is conceding to North Korea in specific therefore the incentive to stay in this region still exists but now what happens is that South Korea gets bad end of the deal because now the uh, US can get away by saying that oh these people have enough resources and enough resources to counter North Korea Korea specific, but these people, but still stay in the region to ensure that he is able to like uh, 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 he is able to use the situation in the first uh, best case possible. Which means that now South Korea is left to defend against North Korea by the army and by the military uh, by what uh, what it has uh, uh, by what it has and get no support whatsoever from US, but still be used as a pawn by US in the first case. We think that this type of bond is very unstrategic for like South Korea in specific because it sufficiently puts South Korea at a back foot and increases the tension in the, re uh, in the region in specific and that's why that happens in the first place. But secondly, what does opening government tell you on this? They tell you that now deterrence will be improved because now they go going forward to go and attack. But how, uh, see how opening opposition, uh, opening opposition already rebutted this idea by saying that uh, uh, Kim Jong Un doesn't give a like does, uh, doesn't give a shit about this because he knows that at best what the people who are going to harm he doesn't care about the people in specific he can easily go into the bunker and do that. But secondly, the analysis that they don't provide 
is to tell you that how these like, like even if in the best case scenario what happens is that even if you get this deterrence you are still not able to deter him from going forward and attacking you because now he feels threatened by you he feels that if they go on to attack they might like they might actually lose so even in the best case the deterrence happen the it leads to more aggressive and more aggressive strategies that king john might like to provide in the scenario that the this war happen and ensure that you suppress south korea to an extent where this doesn't happen but secondly on the class as to where do you get better support and counter influence in north korea and china closing government tells you that china isn't in specific because it doesn't see it as a threat we see that china has a, a expansionist tendency when it has gone forward to occupy regions of south korea has to like has a, a, a bonded out intentions to have this region in specific which uh, which is a harm in the first place we think that without having a strong enough influence or strong enough support such as the us you are more likely to go forward to take a safe haven in china because it already is uh, moving forward uh, i'll take over later is still moving forward to tell you that um, the, uh, 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 because you still need this kind of uh, support of army to ensure that you are able to counter the support from you uh, from uh, from uh, north korea specific which means that the, the tendency for the uh, tendency for south korea to go forward and get the help from uh, china is much more we think that this problematic because of the policy that we have seen in past because of the type of loans that china has given and because of just the mere uh, like uh, of uh, uh, tendency of you to be authoritarian in the first place we think that now south korea right now experiences democracy which is very important to preserve in the future in the first case we think that without it you lose your democracy you lose a way or your life to win and you are only a pawn to the regions around you we think that south korea should have an independent power because it should be a fair give and take when you are giving us a strategic position and and in return you are getting your army and therefore you hold up enough say in this whether uh, rather in that paradigm you hold no say but give you it oh ji uh to think first how a, a country who is getting a stronger uh, becomes lonely uh, because this country is getting stronger stronger in terms of also economy so most uh, relationship should improve and uh, second thing is the nuclear weapon not on, on, sure. yeah, only uh, yeah, this so firstly firstly so, i think that uh, firstly i think that the uh, um, the improvement of the policies is just an assertion because now what happens is that you will never get the amount of nuclear support that you uh, the regions around you have you are getting just a tokenistic benefit which means that the in order to compare you with the nuclear support that north korea or china have you will take years altogether to get that kind of support we think that now you like us is an important actor in providing this support because it is gives you an instant benefit rather than a long term benefit like the side opposition that i talked about but how do you take over opening government because they don't never take the best case as to if this deterrence happen why is it still bad we tell you that if this deterrence happens it is still bad because you lose support from the us and we expand the debate by bringing in more actors such as china who is supporting like uh, who who's actually like countering influence of uh, 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 who's countering uh, influence of south korea and posing a threat to south korea we also tell you about how the relations between china and south korea go to worse and why is it problematic therefore exception is not to propose opposition